Hey everyone! Hola a todos! This is Jahaira. And this is Stephanie. And welcome to Cuento Crimen Podcast. Y aquí on the Cuento Crimen Podcast, we are a true crime podcast and we bring a new case every Wednesday. Cada miércoles. And these are cases that don't get much media attention, so chances are you haven't heard of some of these cases. And we cover these cases in Spanglish. Así que agarra tu abuelita, tu abuelito, tu mamá, tu papá, a quien tú gustes, and come join us every Wednesday for a new true crime case. Tamara Jewel Kepnes was five years old and she was from White Bear First Nation located in Regina, Saskatchewan in Canada. I'm sorry if I am not pronouncing it correctly, but I tried. That was a very tricky word. Yeah. yeah. Tamara was born on September 1st, 1998 to her parents, Lorena and Troy Kepnes. And also Tamara happens to be a twin and her twin se llama Tannis. Lorena and Troy separated soon after the twins were born, though, and the girls spent the majority of their time with their mother, and she had a new partner, quien se llamaba Dean MacArthur, and their biological dad, Troy, lived nearby. Entonces, si lo miraban, you know, they would go visit him, but they were primarily with their mother. Tamara desapareció el 5 de julio del año 2004. She was last seen inside her house on 1-800 block of Ottawa Street in White Bear First Nation. And just a little bit of like background in la area de donde vivían. It was kind of primarily known as a place where people of low income lived. And it just seemed like it had some issues, you know, within the community. And here's some more background information on Tamara's life and family. So her family includes her mother, Lorena, and her father, Troy, and also um, Lorena's boyfriend, que se llama Dean MacArthur. And also she has siblings. So her sister, Summer, is the oldest of 11 years old. She has a brother, que se llama Rain, of 10 years old. And then after comes Tamara and Tennis, the twins, and they were both five years old. There was also a baby girl. Um, she was just a newborn. And to add more about them, you know, we're just trying to paint the picture of Tamara's life and everyone around her. Su mamá Lorena was a recovering alcoholic and so was her boyfriend, Dean. And so though las niñas sí miraban a su papá también, even though they lived with their mother, the relationship between their parents, you know, Lorena and Troy and now Dean, which was the mom's boyfriend, it was not healthy. Yeah, and I think, I mean, como they have this like, battle of you know recovering from mm -hmm. alcohol use and drug use like that is tough you know and then also caring for kids it's just a lot right yeah and having an ex-partner and then a new partner i can just imagine like how the mix it doesn't just yeah mix well. i was gonna say that there's yeah. a lot in the mix and like we did read that it just wasn't healthy right also dean the boyfriend had recently gotten out of jail after serving two-thirds of his three-month sentence for beating Lorena while he was drunk. So here, you know, just painting the picture of how their living situation is and then also how, what the kids are seeing, mm -hmm. right? And so Tamara and her siblings were, you know, not growing up in the best environment as we're describing, you know. And so social services were involved with the family. We did read that they had over 50 reports made to crisis workers. Imagine 50 reports, mm -hmm. that's a lot, dude. Yeah. I mean, we see again how like that system works and there has been so many cases, you know, they han fallado and mm -hmm. are not able to save the children. But like 50, that's a lot. That's a lot. And, you know, even though there was so much going on at home, Tamara era una niña muy inteligente y ella siempre was always excited and, you know, she always loved adventuring out and just enjoying new things. A ella le encantaba jugar Mario Kart y le... Encantaba subirse por los árboles. She was just a kid at heart, exploring. Yeah, a kid being a kid. And so, yeah, let's jump into what happened on July 5th, 2004. La mamá Lorena y su novio Dean tenían a los niños en casa la noche de 5 de julio del año 2004. Y como a las 8 y media de la noche, Lorena y su novio empezaron a discutir. Y Dean se fue de la casa to cool off. I feel like it must have been a big fight. Yeah, to like kind of cool off. Well, I guess that's like... I mean, it's normal. It's normal, I yeah. I guess 
what we should have said is that it was smart of him to walk out. Yeah, like if it's getting like that to heated, the, yeah. you know. Entonces, in the process of doing this, Dean ran into his roommate, Russell. Russell was someone who would sleep in the family's basement sometimes. So I guess he was like maybe paying rent or mm. had some type of arrangement. And so Dean went off to cool off, as we were saying. He even went to go get a can of milk and returned home to leave it for their newborn baby. Then Dean and Russell went to the bar. And we read that they went to St. Regis Hotel about six blocks from the home and Russell, the friend, the like he was so drunk that he couldn't remember dropping off the milk beforehand and that he only recalls sitting outside the hotel. Okay, Loki, I'm sorry, but it makes me so mad to hear you're so drunk that you can't remember and the fact that Dean as a stepfather is doing the same thing. Like, yeah. mucho coraje. like come on, you know, be responsible. Yeah, you're a parent. You're a parent. Mm-hmm. But anyways, while all of that was happening, Lorena was at home, you know, while Dean and Russell were out drinking. Y los niños estaban ahí también en casa, estaban viendo la televisión. And, you know, they're just chilling. They're having a good time. Y ya de eso, como a las once de la noche, you know, they finally all kind of make their way to the rooms. Y ya, you know, con sueño y con todo. So everyone's out. And that's when Lorena had plans to go out that night. Y cuando ella salía, leímos que she kind of relied on her oldest daughter to stay in charge. And that's what happened this particular night. Y entonces los planes de Lorena esta noche era ir a casa de su amiga who only lived a block away. And of course, their plan once they were there was to have some drinks. And eventually they ran out of alcohol. Y entonces ellas se levantan and easy fix, right? Just go get some more at the store. In their mission to go get more alcohol, she also stops by her house to check up on the kids. But then she leaves and goes back to the friend's house. And once she gets back to the friend's house, uh, she calls Summer, her daughter, to give her the phone number of her friend's house, if that makes sense. So she can have a phone number to reach out if anything happened. And so this happened around midnight when she calls back home to let Summer know of the phone number. That this is where she can be contacted yeah. type of thing, yeah. And right after the, all that, Russell, quien era el roommate, llega a la casa y he makes himself a meal. And again, this is a blurry memory for him according to like the sources that we read it is believed que a lo mejor se hizo spaghetti or, you know, something just kind of irrelevant, right? And he says that when he was there, all the children were sleeping in the living room. So that means that they must have left their room maybe to sleep together. A lo mejor tenían miedo or a lo mejor summer, you know, was just like, it was just easier for her to have them all together. And then, yeah, he saw them sleeping there. Se comió su comida y se fue por su camino. He says that he went outside for a smoke. Luego Dean llegó a casa y se encontró a Russell right there on the porch. And that's where Dean beat and stomped on Russell. And I think they even like broke one of the windows during the fight. And and Russell went back inside and he went out through the back door. And he said que he didn't lock the door and that he just went, you know, like he left the house and went straight to the hospital for stitches. And supposedly no one woke up during the fight. No one heard anything. They just fought. And like, yeah, that was that. And I also don't know why they fought. Yeah, I was also thinking that too. Like when we were mm-hmm. talking about it, like, I wonder where the fight happened. But I mean, two drunk men in the middle of the night. Nothing good ever comes out of that. Mm-hmm. Y Dean dice que los niños todavía estaban dormidos. And he says that he then left to go sleep at his aunt's house. But he did get lost before he could make it. And so he finally ends up making it to his aunt's house. De eso como de las cinco a las cinco y media. So it took him a while. Yeah, like how do you get lost? But again, he's, he's drunk, drunk, right? During this time que él está, you know, like caminando a la casa de su tía, no one saw him. No one can really account for him, mm-hmm. right? But again, he's drunk and lost and he somehow made it. Y ya después Lorena llega a la casa como eso de las tres, tres y media de la mañana. Y ella dice que la puerta estaba cerrada con candado. She had to climb in through a window. When she was inside, she just fell asleep on the couch. And around 9 a.m. the next day on July 6, la abuelita de ellos, Louis Shepard, showed up and ella dice que la puerta estaba abierta sin candado. But remember, Lorena says that when she came home, it was locked. So right here, we're seeing some inconsistency. So during this time que llegó la abuelita, Lorena estaba en el sillón y, you know, se estaba curando su cruda. 
And also earlier, we we mentioned that Russell didn't lock the door before mm-hmm. he left to go to the hospital. And then Lorena comes home and she has to go in through the window because it is locked. Yeah. And then next morning, grandma comes and she's saying the door is right, like open. It's opened, yeah. So there's a lot of, yeah, inconsistencies. So that's what we meant, like in the very beginning of the episode, the, you know, Well, I mean, adults. also just trying to get like one... Como se dice story that mm-hmm. kind of like the same storyline yeah. from like three drunk people. Yeah. It's going to be really hard. Yeah. And so now it's the next day and everyone's having breakfast. But the person not at the table is Tamara. And, you know, there's also like a full house con todos los niños and, you know, Lorena trying to cure her hangover. It's a lot going on. But they did have plans to go for a walk. And so Lorena, you know, finally kind of tells the kids like, hey, donde esta Tamara? Like, vayan por ella. We can't leave her behind. And so the kids go and check. Y regresan y le dicen que Tamara no está allí. At first, you know, I feel like any other parent, like, what do you mean she's not there? Mm-hmm. You know, so she goes and she looks for Tamara. But soon enough, she sees that she really wasn't home. Y en este momento es cuando, you know, everyone starts looking for her. They're not like really thinking worst case scenario, right? Because mm-hmm. she could kind of be sleeping in maybe in a different room, right? So they start looking everywhere, they start asking neighbors, they start going outside, they start shouting her name, but she isn't responding. And 90 minutes later, you know, after they finally, I guess, gave up, they called to the authorities and a search began. And by a search, we mean a massive search, Mm -hmm. like they got to work. Yeah, the Regina Police Service set up a command post in the parking lot of a church on 1900 block of Ottawa Street, and that's where hundreds and hundreds of volunteers came by um, to help, and then also with police, and also the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, and we'll abbreviate it as RCMP. They all began searching on foot, they had horses, and they were also searching on air. So yeah, a massive search. And, you know, Lorena was cooperating with authorities, like the que was Vinieron a la casa. She helped them look through the house just to see if there was anything, but there was nothing. Police also questioned sex offenders in the area. They also obtained surveillance footage from the, you know, nearby bars, gas stations, stores, and also a nearby Greyhound depot. And as described earlier, you know, the three adults in the beginning of this case, we said were involved in a very messy night. Like Lorena, Dean, and Russell, todos estaban tomando la noche anterior. And obviously, you know, the night ended up with the fight, ended up with people leaving, people coming in. And in a case like this, where we're dealing with a disappearance, that inconsistency makes it very complicated. Mm -hmm. Days later, an Amber Alert was issued. But in some articles, we read that the Amber Alert had not been implemented in Saskatchewan. So we can't really confirm if they did it, you know, issue one or not, because it's like... I don't know, it kind of overlaps with like history of it it not being implemented that year. And so with everyone trying to get their story straight and all these stories overlapping, there's also the siblings, right? They Mm -hmm. also have, you know, some sort of version of that night. And so um, it came up in the articles that Rain, the brother, um, claims that he felt Tamara get up from bed And that he wasn't too sure what time it was, but he did say that it was, you know, bright outside. So we can assume as, you know, according to his story, that it was kind of the morning hours. Mm -hmm. Also, I'm sorry, like random thought, but it's kind of scary the fact that there was like multiple children, but only one went missing. Like, Mm -hmm. me go pensando like, ¿por qué ella? Right. I I don't know. It's just, and it goes back into like how every little thing can affect, you Mm -hmm. know, I don't know. It's just interesting. Okay, anyways. (laughs) So despite the messy night, Obviously, you know, Tamara is hija de Lorena and Lorena was devastated that her daughter wasn't there. And on top of that, the family grew tired because they felt like they were being mistreated by the police and the media. The public thought that, you know, perhaps Lorena was involved or, you know, the other adults that were there that night. And I mean, we know how it goes. Like, there's always going to be speculations. That's one thing we never really touch on, like, Cómo se siente la familia de mm-hmm. ver todo esto en la presa, de ver like all these articles and different titles and yeah. it's a lot. It can be a lot. Of- yes, and like you know us ourselves too, and like the people who listen to the podcast, we do have our own opinions and we yeah. do have our speculations, but it must be tough on the family mm-hmm. as well. So we try to be as respectful as we can, 
That's respectful and unbiased. Yeah. También leímos que una vez Lorena fue atacada by strangers and this is very extreme. Like, yes, people have opinions about maybe the family being involved in the yeah. disappearance, but to attack someone, like, we should have, like, respectful speculations mm -hmm. uh, because we don't know, right? Or even also, like, es su mamá. Like, yeah. she's going through a lot right mm -hmm. now. Her daughter is missing and, yeah, como dices tú, like, just be respectful and mindful. Yeah. On July 13th of 2004, the big search efforts stopped. But they were still working, you know, into the case. And as time went, they received hundreds of tips. Mm -hmm. And also, police posted a reward for $25,000 for information that could lead to Tamara's whereabouts. And on July 19th, del 2004, Dean was charged with assault, causing harm to Russell and sending him to the hospital on the night of Tamara's disappearance. He did try to appeal, but was denied and sentenced to nine months. And after all this time, todavía no se sabe por qué Dean golpeó a Russell. También leímos que Tamara's siblings were removed from the house and from Lorena's care by social services, and they were placed into foster care. It makes me so sad. I don't know. De lo que leímos, yeah, maybe home wasn't the most stable place either. But, you know, todas las historias que escuchamos from, yeah. like, being in the foster care and everything. Yeah, it, it's tough because, like, you, what is safer, Yeah, right? Obviously, like, from, from what we read, this environment wasn't good for the kids. Mm -hmm. But it, it's still heart-wrenching Heart yeah. when family breaks up like that and, like, kids have to be taken away. Yeah, it's still sad, sure. you yeah, know? Yeah. Y el 11 de agosto del 2004, Troy, which, you know, it's the biological father, was charged with assaulting Dean with a baseball bat. Troy dice que él fue a la casa de Lorena and Dean y que él nomás was trying to get answers about his daughter's disappearance. He was trying to see where his daughter was. And I guess from this, we can kind of assume that he thought maybe Dean had something to do with it. Mm -hmm. And on September 2004, an unsealed search warrant revealed that police had evidence to believe that Tamara had been abducted because there was blood found on the floor and on the front porch and also on some bicycle seating on the porch. That same month, investigators searched Muscow Patong First Nation, which is approximately 60 kilometers northeast of Regina. And the reason why they did that was because investigators pensaron que quizás podía haber una conexión entre la desaparición de Tamara and a burnt-out Volkswagen van that was found on the reserve. And it does seem like a far, right, like a far reach, but this van was actually stolen 10 blocks away from Tamara's home la misma noche que ella desapareció. And on top of that, a formal jail guard named Sherry Ann Rose had told police that she and a former inmate had stolen the van y que recogieron a Tamara and dumped her body in the ravine on the reserve. And I feel like that's a big statement. And mm -hmm. so that's why police ended up going up north to continue the search. Mm -hmm. And even though this seems like a solid lead, unfortunately, nothing of interest was found related to Tamara. That must be so frustrating. Mm -hmm. Like, they missed all of this evidence yes. and this very specific and statement. Like, yeah, you're, like, so hopeful. You feel yeah. like this is the lead. This is what's going to be the break in the case. And to it be nothing. Nothing, yeah. Y en junio del 2005, a new team of investigators were assigned to the investigation. Y en ese mismo mes, el junio del 2005, a memorial march was held to commemorate the one-year anniversary of Tamara's disappearance. And... This would later be replaced the next year by an annual barbecue. In October 2005, searchers brought in cadaver dogs to help the investigation, to help find Tamara. And so they searched around Regina for three days with a specific focus on the north end of Winnipeg Street and Wascana Lake and Wascana Creek. And this was one of the last major searches for Tamara. Y los años pasan y pasan y nadie sabe nada sobre Tamara. A body was never found and the case kind of goes cold. 
So yeah, years and years later, and now 2014, a hand-drawn of Moscow Peyton First Nation was uploaded to a Reddit account, and the user was claiming that the wells on the reserve contain Tamra's remains. According to the user, she found this map amongst the belongings of a deceased relative. Y que su abuelita había agarrado este mapa from an aunt who'd drawn it based on a visit to a person in prison. So there's like some people involved here that we don't know, but point is that this person got a hold of this map and then believed that it was a location of Tamara's um, remains. And that's scary, right? How, you know, the fact that someone drew this map. Yeah. And someone out there is talking about Tamara. I don't know. It's just, you know, kind of. I feel like it all kind of is theory first until you start applying it. And then you start realizing like, holy crap, Mm -hmm. this is something. And it's like, okay, you know, in this moment, authorities need to confirm or not confirm, Mm -hmm. right? Like they need to prove if this is like real. Let's just say like. These people who we don't know, they're talking about Tamara, but Mm why? Maybe like we don't know if this is real or not in the moment, right? Like this post on Reddit. But the fact that they're talking about Tamara is like because they might know something. Maybe the story Mm -hmm. twisted at some point, like a person told this. It's kind of like that. What do you call that game? That um, Uh, story, the telephone game. Oh, the telephone game. Yeah. You know, at some point. Yeah. I don't know. It's scary. No, it is scary. And I feel like it's not a coincidence, you know, that they, como dices tú, like, ¿por qué saben de su nombre? Or how do they know this case, right? And so investigators did end up searching this area. But again, there was no evidence that Tamara had ever even been there, you know, in the in those wells. Mm-hmm. After that, they had no leads. And again, time and time is passing and no one knows what happens to Tamara. Tamara's case kind of came up again during July 2018 when there was a case action lawsuit that was filed against the federal government it claimed and i quote the federal government had breached the charter rights of indigenous families to security and freedom from discrimination and that numerous negative experiences were had as a result of the alleged mishandling of cases end quote and i'm glad that was a thing obviously like it shouldn't have happened Mm -hmm. but like at least you know there's some sort of fight. Yeah, for sure. Y ya pal último del año del 2019, the Regina Police Service renewed its commitment to solving the case. El caso de Tamara todavía sigue activo, so that means they haven't closed it, and it's currently in the hands of the cold case unit. So, you know, they still have hopes, and I'm glad that they are being held accountable and they're doing something about it. And so, of course, there's always going to be rumors, right, Mm -hmm. when it comes to disappearances. And within the community, there's going to be a lot of versions. And, you know, he said, she said, and I saw this or I believe that. And so rumors soon began to spread about what happened to Tamara. There was one rumor that she was last seen at a dollar store with an older woman. And then there's also other rumors that they think Tamara never existed The fact, like, she wasn't a twin, like, she just never existed. And that she was only made up in order to scam money and get more money from, like, social services. But that was turned down because there's hospital records that show that she does exist. Dude, I feel like that one really tripped me out. Mm -hmm. Like, the whole idea of, like, making someone up. Yeah. That's really, like... Gives me like Matrix vibes. Like, yeah. I don't know. Like, you know, like it is, but it isn't. Yeah. But then it's true. Like, realistically, el hospital va a saber, right? Like, yeah, there's records, no, right? Yeah. Like, how do you, I don't know. Those are just people like, you know, in the community, just wild minds, you know? <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's I, it's interesting. I really wonder how people come to those, yeah. you know? And there is also a third rumor que supuestamente los detectives estaban buscando a un hombre who was white and middle-aged by the name Rocky or Rock. But however, police never really confirmed this. Nunca se supo decir why it came up and it was just kind of dismissed. And then another rumor is that Tamara was abducted by a stranger. Alguna gente piensa que she may have wandered away, que ya se fue away from her siblings, kind of away from her home, y que por allí alguien se la llevó, like maybe a driver who was just driving around or like, what is it called? Uh, uh, crime of opportunity? Yeah, something so, like that, yeah. 
También leímos que hay gente en la comunidad que piensa que Tamara fue robada por alguien en the drug trade. And también there's other rumors que uh, gente piensa que Tamara fue vendida por su mamá in order to pay off a cocaine debt that she had. But Lorena denies this. Like she said, that's not true. And mm, I feel like those are so much like, como se dice, deeper and like darker. Yeah kind of sidetracked but there's like this whole account on tiktok about this baby girl who she was like an orphan and she was being um abused in the orphanage uh -huh. i don't know if you heard of it no but basically now she's like been rescued but some people believe that she's still being abused and like people believe like that she's being trafficked and, and it's like a oh whole, my god yeah it's like holding i'll send you the videos okay but anyways i think that's why like I mean, hearing this case again, and I was like, oof, like, I was yeah. really just all up in that case yesterday, now this one, so it's <laughs> it's really scary, though, to think about. And then there is another theory, and this one revolves a person que, you know, occasionally would stay with the family at their house. So Lorena le dijo a la policía sobre esta mujer, who actually, she wasn't even aware of her name because she just used different... Uh, identity so it never really was clear what her like real name was pero los niños la llamaban big auntie she was described kind of like as a sketchy character que siempre mentía you know she was just she wasn't who she would say she was and so she had been staying at the house right before Tamara's disappearance but at some point se fue de la casa porque ella y Lorena se you know they had a fallout or a misunderstanding And so ever since then, she has not been seen. It's kind of, you know, maybe something yeah. to think about. I think out of all the theories, like this one is the one that, why should I, I mean, she left. I don't know. I don't, I mean, some people are very like llenas de rencor mm -hmm. and everything. Like it could have easily been that she came back and yeah. took, you know, Tamara. I would, yeah, I would want to know like how earlier you said why Tamara, right? Yeah. So like. As, you know, the mother, Lorena, maybe she can try to assess who had a particular interest in, in Tamara. Tamara, right? You know? Yeah. And then also, I mean, people saying que la miraron, like, at the Dollar Tree with an older mm -hmm. woman. Maybe this is the older woman. Yeah. And then maybe this also explains inconsistency of the door being locked and open. Like, quizás estaba abierta cuando regresó, se iba a Tamara, and she locked the door. Yeah, I don't know. There's just so many theories, yeah. a lot of speculations, and all of this, but, like, nothing is making the case, like, progress. Like, nothing is, you know, breaking the case. And so now, every year, the community holds barbecue in Tamara's honor, and it's held at the Regina Treaty and Status Indian Services. And the Regina Police Service sends officers to help serve food, too. They hold it to show everyone... Que, you know, they're still looking for Tamara and that they are still there to support and show their support to other families of missing and murdered indigenous women as well. We do want to update y'all on the family. Um, Lorena's other children were never permanently returned to her custody. We did read that she went on and had more children after the disappearance of Tamara. I think we read that she had three more kids. We also read that these children were also taken by social services. And as for her twin, Tannis, she is currently in college. And another update, uh, Russell Sheepskin passed away on January 1st, 2009. So, like, if he had more information and didn't speak, then it's all, you know, gone. It's all yeah. gone there. Damien Troy, her biological dad, has shared that it's been super hard for him not knowing what happened to his daughter, and that he also experiences guilt. He's very guilty for losing custody, for not being there that night. So also, like, really hard and that, that, emotions. That must be tough. Yeah, a lot of emotions and, like, a lot of, like, what ifs. Just the feeling that you didn't do enough, mm -hmm. but it really was just out of your control. Yeah. And, you know, now in present day, like, here we are talking about Tamara on Cuento Crimen, the year is 2023, y todavía... No hay ningún update on the case. She was never found and there was never any really solid leads on her. The day she disappeared, she was wearing a light blue striped halter top with pink. She had light blue jeans and she either had rubber boots or pink and white shoes. Or she may have been barefoot. 
At the time of her disappearance, she stood 3'5 and weighed around 35 to 40 pounds. She had dark brown to black hair and brown eyes. She has two circle type birthmarks on her stomach, one dark and the other lighter in color, and a scar on one of her legs just below the knee. El último día que Tamara fue vista, ella vestía de una camiseta sin mangas de rayas azul claro con detalles en rosa. Ella llevaba vaqueros azul claro y botas de goma o zapatos rosas y blancos o quizás mente ella pudiera estar descalza. En el momento de su desaparición, ella medía 3.5 y pesaba entre 35 y 40 libras. Acuérdense que solo tenía 5 años. Y ella tenía el pelo corto y estaba de color café oscuro a negro y ojos morrones. Ella tenía dos marcas de nacimiento tipo círculo en el estómago, una oscura y otra más clara y una cicatriz en una de sus piernas justo debajo de su rodilla. So if anyone has any information, as small as it may be, we encourage you to contact the Regina Police Service at 306-777-6500 or Crime Stoppers at 1-800-222-8477. The Regina Police Service is offering a $50,000 reward for any information that leads to the whereabouts of Tamara. Si usted tiene información sobre este caso, por favor comunicarse con el Servicio de Policía de Regina al número 306-777-6500 o a Crime Stoppers al número 1-800-222-8477. El Servicio de Policía de Regina está ofreciendo una recompensa de $50,000 por cualquier información que ayude a encontrar a Tamara. And that is all for Tamara's case. Like, again, nos parte mucho el corazón whenever we leave a case kind of just hanging and we don't really have much closure to it. Um, lo único que podemos decir es que el mundo está chiquito and you don't know who's listening. So if anyone knows anything, please reach out. Her siblings still deserve to know mm -hmm. what happened. We will be sharing a picture of Tamara on our social media So we ask you all to share her case to help us spread the word mm -hmm. and not forget her. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard to close these cases. But anyways, you know, just thank you all for listening. And como dijo Steph, if y'all can just share it, that would mean a lot. And we will see you all for next week's case. <laughs>